Okay, everybody, I finally fixed the uh, knock sensor codes on my 2001 Chevy 2500 HD, uh, the 6-liter. Uh, everybody should be basically the same. We got it, at, you know, they're underneath the intake. Can't say too much about that design and not very smart in my opinion. It's like when they did the Chevy Impalas and they put the coolant right over the ignition and coolant would leak on the ignition uh, down there, but... That's here nor there, but uh, what I did finally to fix it, that's what I'm going to go through my steps here, um, my process. Um, first thing I had done is I replaced them under the intake over here, like everybody else, um, and that worked for a while, um, and then the codes came back, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Um, so I did some testing, and I found out that one of the knock sensors had gone bad. So what did I, I did next, uh, because I wasn't going to take the intake off again until I could figure out if it's the knock sensor or something else going on. Um, I checked the resistance at the computer and all that, and it was good. The grounds, I even added extra grounds onto the frame and all, and uh, in the front and in the back, and I cleaned all the grounds that I could find um, on the frame and, the, you know, up here under the front bumper and stuff. Um, so the next thing I did, there was one sensor that was still working good. What I did the trick, like every, some people were talking about, I did the single wire where I uh, got a new harness and uh, combined it together to fit on one. And I ran it on that for a while, and that lasted for about two months. Um, and then it went bad. So what I am figured out here was that it all comes down to the resistance on these knock sensors. Now, the resistance on these is supposed to be like 93K to 107K, right around there. Um, and that's what you need to have. Um, if you're at the high end or low end, I found the best. Um, and I used AC Doco knock sensors. I used aftermarket knock sensors. And I found out whatever, when it's right in the middle, right at like 99K, um, that worked best for me. And they seem to be the, the best ones on aftermarket or on AC Delco. Um, you know, as far as the 15 foot pounds that everybody said that's crucial and all that uh, didn't matter to me I put them down at 15 foot pounds. I put them down hand tight and then I used a ratchet to snug everything down and That worked for me um, so I Finally to finish my testing here. What I did is I took uh, Another single knock sensor and I put it on the back side of the engine with the single wire um, and it was still, it worked for a little while, like a month, and all of a sudden it gave the code. Because what you're looking at, like I said, with the resistance, is if you got one, you're going to have a higher higher resistance. When you got two, you're separating that resistance, so it's seeing, you know, the two different resistance. Um, and that's what you need. So what I finally did is I put a knock sensor on the backside of the engine over here, and then I put a knock sensor on the side of the engine over here. You can kind of see it down there just past the... Uh, Right in, uh, I can't know if I can see it very well from right from that angle. I'll try a different angle over here and see if we can zoom in at it. You can kind of see it down there. Whoops, right down there below the dipstick, the yellow dipstick down in there. Maybe a better angle here. There, you can see it like right down there. So I got one on the side engine here on the left side and over on the driver's side. I got one at the back of the engine. And it's been uh, about six and a half months now and it's working good. Everything is running fine. I haven't got any codes, haven't had any problems or anything like that. So I'm gonna leave this for a little while because I don't wanna go onto the intake over here yet because I'm gonna give it another month and then I'm gonna go ahead. I don't have the time right now. You know, this is not really that hard. It's just, you know, take the intake off and all that. It's just time consuming is what it is. You know, you just gotta have the time to do it and all that. But one thing, if you're going to do the testing for the two in the back, or even leave it that way, what I did, if you see that down here, you can see right down there by the dipstick over here, some aluminum foil. So what I did right in there, um, I took and wrapped those the harness uh, after I split it. I didn't cut it. I just opened up the wrapping that was around the, the harness so I could stretch it over from right to the left. And I wrapped them in aluminum foil and wrapped them in electrical tape because... Under the intake, it's not as hot as it is by the exhaust, exhaust manifold and all that on both sides and in the back of the engine. Uh, so you want to make sure you wrap that with um, aluminum foil and electrical tape really, really good to make sure they're protected from that heat. Because, you know, this one's like approximately right about here. And it's still pretty close to the exhaust manifold. But the one over on the left side, 
over here, since it's on the side of the engine and not the back over here, it's pretty close. So I wrapped that one really good with, uh, with aluminum foil and electrical tape. And it's like I said, it's been working for six months, a little over six months now. So I'll give it another month, and then when I get some time, I'll go ahead and take this intake off and put it all back under there so it looks nice and neat. And are that far, you know, um, if I decide to do it, I mean, it just depends on time and all that. You know, I might wait till summertime when I have more time that way um, to be able to do that. But it is all about resistance. You have to check those snock sensors when you get them. You you want to find one that's right in the middle. Because if it's like right at the bottom and it goes below the 93K or if it's right at the top at 107K and it goes above that, you're going to get the codes again. So you want to test when those knock sensors come in, you want to check that against the ground um, and make sure that it's 93K ohms, or excuse me, in that range, of course. But the ones I, that are working for me right now are the ones that were right in the middle at 99K. Because I went through five knock sensors to finally get this to, to work right. And I figured out it's just the resistance. That's all it is. Because resistance, uh, once it's grounded to the engine and in that uh, hole and tightened down really good, it's all about resistance. Because the computer needs to see a certain resistance. It's so sensitive to that resistance um, that it's going to spit codes no matter, no matter what. So you want to make sure you do that. And then hopefully this information helps everybody. And... Um, be able to get theirs fixed because I know it was a long process. This took me uh, several months. I wish it was over like a year just to get it do right. Um, because like I said, I even had the extra grounds. Like, see, here's my extra ground right here. I added on, you know, from the battery. And then I cleaned all my grounds and all that down there just to make sure the computer was grounding good and everything. But this worked for me. Hopefully it helps somebody out there. And good luck with it. And uh, hopefully you get it fixed. Okay, real quick to add this on the end uh, to this, um, just in case people ask or anything like that. Yes, I, when I took the first time off, took the intake off and uh, took those knock sensors off, I did replace the harness and put the new section. But I cleaned those holes out really good because there was a little bit of moisture and dirt in there. And you want those, you know, perfectly clean. So I cleaned them out really good, just in case anybody asks. But they were cleaned out really good and the harness was replaced um, with a new harness and they were all... These two were both AC Delco because I went with AC Delco first. Um, I used the aftermarket for testing um, after afterwards, um, so I could find out exactly which knock sensors I needed. But the final two knock sensors um, are AC Delco. Um, I used the you know so maybe you know because the tolerance on the aftermarket were you know maybe a little less and stuff like that or a little more rather. It would have been more resistance over there because they were reading higher. They were up at the upper end of the, the resistance um, spectrum that was on the, that's supposed to be the specs for this. That was just an extra, just in case anybody asked. Yes, I did do the cleaning under there and I did seal it afterwards, you know, with the silicone all around there and everything like that. So they're sealed, you know, watertight now under there. So they should have been working. But what it was is I think one of those might have been, uh, I didn't check the, it was at the top. Yeah, that's what happened. It went over the top um, and one of them stayed right in the middle. Um, but I, those are still under there. So I have one good knock sensor under there um, that's still good that I could use if I needed to again. Um, but be, like I said, I'm going to make sure these are going to work good for another month before I decide to um, replace it under the intake because I don't want to have to do this and then do it all over again. So uh, just the last little, just in case somebody asked. All right. Thanks, guys.